We've got off to a great start with Tony Soon Homes a couple years ago. Getting, I know that the first few times that we were getting 14, 15 leads for Coming Soon. So we're going to reintroduce Coming Soon. Ours is KCComingSoon.com. But we're going to reintroduce it because this will help you guys with listings and with leads. And instead of pay Zillow thousands and thousands of dollars, we're going to do this and it will really help you. Her team right now consists of 12 agents. It's uh, seven buyer's agents and five listing uh, specialists. And welcome, Marty Hampton. Hey, y'all. That's good, but, but I'll tell you, I've been in real estate since I've been in my 20s. It wasn't a part-time gig for me. It wasn't, I didn't retire from IBM and get into real estate, which is about 90% of my market. They all retired from IBM and said, oh, this dad was real estate. And uh, mess up your market, but uh, <laughs> uh, no, I got real estate because I was a single parent and had three kids to raise, and it was either real estate or welfare. That's, you know, my, my prospects didn't look too good, and um, so I got real estate. I had a bad car. Um, the car actually um, went out a lot when I was with customers, pretty depressing. Had a $300 uh, uh, line of credit at Sears and Roebuck, soon to go out of business, Sears and Roebuck. Sears and Roebuck, at that point in time, sold gasoline in my town. So buying gasoline at Sears and Roebuck was the only way that I could make it from one paycheck to the next paycheck. But let me tell you what a big shot is. A big shot is a little shot that just kept on shooting. And man, I kept on shooting because those uh, kids just meant, meant a lot to me. And you've got your reason for being in real estate. Uh, I bet if I ask you to write that down right now, you could tell me what your reason is. And so what I want to give you, and the reason I'm still in real estate today, is because I've learned a few things. <laughs> and you know, let me just say that um, it is hard work to get to the top. I just want to tell you that no matter where you are, no matter what you got going, you know, there's still, that you are in one of the most incredible opportunities that there is in this country right now, and that's residential real estate. I've been in real estate in a raging buyer's market. Raging. I've been in real estate in an incredible seller's market. And I've been in everything in between. <laughs> seller's market. Seller's market. Well, how, do you, how quick do your listings sell? Ooh, baby, baby. <laughs> Multiple offers? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, how many? Two to thirty. How many? How many do you have on one of yours, Lance? Seventeen. You know that's my record, Lance. <laughs> that is my record. I have actually had seventeen offers on one house. We had a twenty-four. Yep. Woo! Wow. Baby, baby, wow. baby. <laughs> now that is, that's a good offer. You know what? That's more work than just having one offer, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. What's your biggest challenge when it comes to getting a listing or servicing a listing? What are you experiencing when you go and get a listing? Unrealistic pricing expectations from the seller who thinks their house is worth more. Yep. It's not going No, so that's not true. <laughs> what happens over here? Oh, my. Commission cutters. Mm. What are they cutting to? Load. You can't say no. Load. <laughs> well, I've certainly dealt with all of that, but I would tell you that if you, I've got, I've got stuff to deal with y'all are not got yet. You will get it. It's places like Open Door. Have you ever heard of Open Door? Yes. Have you ever heard of Red Fin? Yes, Have you ever heard of Knock? Have you ever heard of offer pad? I mean, these bright, techy guys that look like they're maybe 25 to 35. And you know what? They raise money. They raise money for Wall Street people and the people, and actually one of them I just read about, over 50% of the money that they raised for a real estate venture was over 400 million. And, and over half of it was from Saudi Arabia. So there's big money coming into our business. And that big money is focusing on 
reaching its hand in your pocket <laughs> and getting out this great opportunity that you have in real estate. So I want to tell you that even though maybe that dance hasn't gotten over here yet, it's going to get here. It's going to affect you because you've already got price cutters and they come right after the price cutters. They're actually purchasing companies that do price company uh, cutting. So we're going to find out a way that we can basically um, go and, and really have uh, a, a unique selling proposition that, that gives them. Uh, one of the newest ones actually is Knock in my market. And Knock will come out and buy your home um, to allow you to buy the next home. It's a trade-in type program. Now, the folks, they're saying that they're not doing this. They're not flipping real estate. But if they're not flipping real estate, how, how are they making money? I, the last I heard, people went into business so they could actually make a profit. <laughs> you know, that's uh, maybe simplistic, but, but that's what we do in America. So all of these companies are in, are in business to get some of the equity. And in our area, uh, another audience participation, you've got a seller's market, you've got unrealistic sellers as far as the home value. So tell me what your appreciation has been on the homes here in the last 12 months, the last three years. Okay. <coughs> 10, 10, 15, 15. 10 to 15%. They do that in LA. They do that in California. So we've had some of that appreciation also. That's another way that they come in here. So we want to get that, that extra money. You know, you've waited a long time, Matt, but this is a script. You can tell it to a seller. Mr. Seller, we've waited a long time to be in this good of a seller's market. And so what we want now is to take advantage of that seller's market and put that additional equity in your pocket, not in uh, one of these other pockets. And I'll show you how to use that script to bounce back against a discount broker. But instead of uh, playing defense in our business, we've got to play some offense. We've got to figure out the next dance. We've got to dance better than they do. And we've got to learn the dance before they learn it. Now, that's, I'm telling you what's coming, and it's coming because of those discount brokers. So I want you to avoid making the biggest mistake that I see happening right now is that we're, presu we're presuming that whatever worked yesterday in our business is going to work tomorrow. It's not. We, we got to change with the times. We got, you know, we got to get a little bit relative. And, and it's all about the people you hang around with. Actually, David just talking about a little bit. You know, I'm not into the retirement crowd. You know, I, I'm just not. I'm just not. St I'm not doing real estate. I'm not going to go on yesterday's laurels. And if you ever heard about sales, it's not about what happened today. It's what. It's not about what happened yesterday. It's what are you going to do for me today? That's what your seller wants to know is what you're going to do for him today. I've always said when you get a listing, that it's kind of like being on a honeymoon for the first 10 minutes they love you and then every day after that it starts going down. Yeah. So, so anyway, we've got to, we can't look at this business that it's going to be the opportunity that it was five years ago and 10 years ago. We got to change with the times and believe me folks, this industry is changing. Kansas City doesn't know how to play defense. Well, I'm <laughs> just saying. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I just read a statistic on NOC, uh, which is one of those, those companies I was telling you about. And the biggest thing that they're going to do to change their system in the next year is they're going to go from 100 employees to 200 employees. And I want to tell you that that's the person that's going to take your commission. It's going to be a techie person out of, maybe out of college, maybe not. They're going to have insurance. They're going to have health insurance. They're going to have 401ks in that. They're going to make lower salaries, but they're going to be able to give a new experience to the consumer. And that's what we've got to be concerned about, to still have your opportunity. I want you to know who's getting ready to move, who's getting ready to shape, because that's what your business is for. You need to know what's happening in real estate. This is a great way to let you know what's happening in real estate. National sales average is you get one out of every three listings that you go on. I think. But you're going to have to focus like a laser beam on going to the listing appointments and getting listing appointments. 
And I can share with you a number of ways for you to get listings. One of the most important things that you do is have that first conversation with a prospective seller. There's only two ways that you're going to have a conversation with a prospective seller. They're going to call you or you're going to call them. Ta-da! <laughs> not brain surgery over here. So if they call you, here's most agents. Oh, I said, yeah, absolutely. If you come over Tuesday, yeah, I'll be over Tuesday. And then they hang up, they don't get any information. They got nothing. They're so excited. It's just, it's crazy. You got to be cool in this business. Listen, sales is a series of questions that you ask somebody to get to a desired outcome. And the you want to know everything you can during that first conversation. You want to know if they're competing with, if you're competing with somebody. You want to know if it's a have to sell or a want to sell or I'm going to sell. If, I, if I'm transferred to another city, I have to sell. Uh, but if I'm just shopping the market, I just want to sell if I get my price. I've heard that once or twice in my career. Uh, so that qualifying question that you that you ask is really important. And see, most salespeople, when their mouth opens, you're Mach 10, and you're going. But actually, sales is a listening skill and asking really, really good questions with a good heart attitude. Like, you really think it's going to sell for forty thousand over? <laughs> When your neighbor sold it, what's the difference between your house and their house? Their house sold last month at 180,000. You think you can get? Tell me, sell me on why you're going to get 220. You can fix it, fix it up, make it like their house. That's exactly right. <laughs> the new buyer can fix it yeah. up. They can spend that 40,000. Well, gotta have room for it's, negotiation. It's, oh, at room for negotiation. Isn't that a good one? You know, you know the future. I love this job.